Right. They never, ever show stuff like that. Instead, they've got them as these, they show Jesus usually as this sort of hayseed hick who acts stoned or something because mm -hmm. he's always blissed Loves out. Everybody, yeah. oh, I love everybody and I'm blissed <laughs> out. I'm always looking at you like, you know, looking through you or something. He's nonviolent. He's nonviolent. And, you know, come on, show him in a temple. Show him doing some, some research. Show him with, you know, people that are ex of extreme intelligence and capability and and you're going to get my attention because that's yeah, if you look at the were. lost books i mean jesus definitely had a temper or he you know when people attacked him you know bad things happened to him just like when they attacked the prophets in the old testament right you know uh god or 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 just their very beingness something would the angels would protect him or or or, or different things like that uh now in the alabaster box um and then this was the box that was procured by Mary Magdalene, right. according to one of the lost books, uh, the Infancy Gospel of Thomas. Mm -hmm. Now, in that version, the alabaster box supposedly contains the foreskin of Jesus. Oh, really? That when he was circumcised on the eighth day by a Hebrew, Hebrew woman that was huh. acting as the mole. Hmm. Um, a little bit of a DNA be the evidence the going on too, there, I guess. Huh? But, and also in the story, it, it said that Mary was fed by the hands of angels because she was raised in the temple and the an there were angels out there and people were watching them give her manna and she was eating. Incredible. So when you're talking about the angels, you're not talking about the Hallmark card angels. You're talking about immaterial beings, ephemeral right. beings that can even take material form. I mean, sure. there's lots of examples of where these beings are, on one hand, they're, they're beings of light, then on the other, they're sitting down, they're eating. Like as the angels that appeared to Abraham in the Old Testament is a classic example of mm -hmm. beings that are identified as angels, but Abraham fed them human food. So they probably came from another realm and then have the ability or capability of materializing in this realm. So maybe that's what you're talking about when the angels are feeding Mary Magdalene. Right, and somehow these these angels are, are like intermediate beings or they're like a higher self. They're somehow connected to right. us. And, and and they you know they they serve a very important function mm -hmm. of you know they're messengers of course but also uh, they they affect nature and, and different things. Yeah. Uh, well, to me, the rubber chicken just came out of the ceiling when you said the word higher self, mm -hmm. because from the Gnostic Gnostic perspective, I mean, that's what they they taught that this is a world of illusion. Mm -hmm. that our pure self, our real self, remains back in the source and a part of us is projected into this realm sort of like a puppet on a string and comes into this realm to experience and to learn the life lessons. But ultimately what we all want to learn is how to reconnect with that mm -hmm. higher self. Uh, and there's great stories about that that the Gnostics shared with one another and people that connected with that way. And to me, I mean, the, the person that I think, this is a little bit off the topic, but it's sure. related, but a person that it is claimed has connected with his higher guardian angel or is fully tapped in and connected with that self is Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. He was supposed <laughs> to have learned all this incredible ancient magic, some of it coming right. from Aleister Crowley, that enabled him to connect with his higher guardian angel, as they call it, or term it, or his higher self that then bestowed upon him this incredible manic genius that, that uh, unleashed all these this incredible music on the world and changed uh, changed the world. He was definitely tuning in to uh, something. Yeah. From somewhere a higher level of guitar playing. Right, for right, sure. right. Yeah, he was on the Olympics. Uh, I saw that. Uh, Whole yeah. lot of love in China and Beijing. <laughs> it's like here, take that. <laughs> now, William, you claim that you, and you you travel all over the world to sacred sites and mm -hmm. uh, sacred spaces. But uh, one of your major claims, and you do tours of Nashville, yeah. that Nashville is somehow related to some kind of ancient mysticism. It's the most amazing story I've ever researched. And as a matter of fact, Nashville to me is one of the, the key sacred sites on the planet right now. Nashville is the only city in the world that has copies of two healing temples from the ancient world. We have Athena's Temple of Holy Wisdom, the Parthenon. Right. In Centennial Park. And then at the Bicentennial Mall State Park in front of the state capitol, we have a 2,200 foot long magician's rod that is laid out and growing on 19 acres. And that rod is a virtual mirror image of the most ancient and most profound cosmic axis, as it was called, <clears throat> Mount Meru from Asia. 
Our Bicentennial Mall and Mount Meru from Mongolia are virtually identical to one another. All by chance, too, because the architect who designed it says that they didn't set out to do this. <laughs> and so what I'm saying is, is that I think they just connected with that higher mind or that yeah. higher mind operated through them to cause this magnificent living temple to be laid out. Is and this the Bicentennial Mall? The Bicentennial Mall, okay. yeah, that's right. It's an extraordinary place. It's got this amazing green space that's lined with oak trees, mm -hmm. okay? The biblical definition of a green space like that lined with oak trees is an Asherah. Mm -hmm. And then at the top of the Bicentennial Mall is what's called the Court of Three Stars. Uh -huh. It's got 50 25-foot tall pillars, stone pillars that have bells in them. So it's, it's a ring of stones, okay? Mm -hmm. When you go into the Bible and you look up a ring of stones or circle of stones, you're led to a place called Gilgal. This is the name of the place where Elijah ascended into the heavens in a whirlwind mm -hmm. while 50 prophets witnessed it. At the Bicentennial Mall, you have the circle of stones, a Gilgal, and there are exactly 50 of these stones. I call that place a Gilgal. Yeah, it's not a coincidence. It's, it's, it's no. amazing. In fact, I, I started <laughs> researching all this. Oh, must have been 15 years ago now. I was, I was researching FDR's search for the Holy Grail in Mongolia in 1934. Mm -hmm. His Secretary of Agriculture, Henry Wallace, and a third man named Nicholas Rurik, a world-famous Russian mystic and guru, had reformed the archetypal trio of the three wise men. Mm -hmm. And they sent Nicholas Rurik to Mongolia looking for the reincarnated Jesus and the secrets of the Holy Grail. This started to become common knowledge in, in the 1940s. Well, Henry Wallace wrote a series of letters to Nicholas Rurik during the course of this expedition. And one of those letters suggested to me that Nashville was going to be the place where they were going to return the secrets of the Holy Grail. And so I'm thinking, Nashville? <laughs> I just, so I just start driving around town looking around for, yeah. for evidence of this. And I'm, I'm driving down Jefferson Street and I see this giant red granite monolith with this pattern, this antenna etched on it. And I said, wait a minute, I've seen that before. <laughs>